Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all for being here. We'll take questions. Good afternoon, Mayor. Good afternoon. I'm Dana Rebick from WGN. In its recent report, the Civic Federation gave some recommendations on some ideas on ways to trim the budget. Just curious um, if you are considering any of those um, that they made last week. We've looked at all of uh, those considerations. There are a plethora of considerations that are coming in. I believe that's a sign of hope. Um, I'm not sure if all of these agencies and entities have been as engaged as they've been in with, and they've been then with my administration. Um, it's a true testament to the spirit of collaboration. So those ideas and all of the ideas that come forward, um, as I said, um, we will consider um, um, everything that is being placed on the table. Thank you. Hey, Mayor. Hey. Um, your seventh Board of Education appointee is Rafael Yanez. Why did you pick him and what does he bring to the table? <laughs> well, well, first of all, he's a public servant. Um, as someone who is raising a family in the city of Chicago, someone who's been a police officer, I believe, for 15 years or, or something like that. Um, like all of the board members that we've had and the board members that are coming in, these are people who are deeply tethered and connected to the neighborhoods in which, uh, quite frankly, need bona fide, legitimate leadership that will speak to the values of, of our city. Those values are very simple. Every single child deserves a well-funded, um, enriched experience within our K through 12 system. Um, I know that comes at, as a shock to people that this is somehow a radical idea, uh, but Rafael Yanez and other board members who have been uh, nominated are individuals that have literally fought hard for democracy. To have an elected representative of the school board, these are deeply caring individuals that love our city and they want to see our, our school district transformed. Uh, hey. the, the school board's agenda review committee is meeting uh, this week. On the agenda is two closed session items, one to discuss personnel matters, one to discuss potential litigation. Have you asked the new board to fire Pedro Martinez, and are you worried that if they do so, they might face uh, potential litigation? Well, you know, look, here's what these board members are prepared to do is to carry out the vision of the people of Chicago. The people of Chicago voted for a parent. They voted for a public school educator. They voted for someone who recognizes that there's actually value in having well-rounded um, curriculum, as well as um, activities that broaden the, the, and enrich the experience of children. All of you all know that my children um, are public school students, the first mayor in the history of Chicago, to, to, to do that. And we're gonna fight to ensure that every single family has an opportunity to experience the fullness of their child's potential. That's what this moment is all about. I have never um, moved in a surreptitious way as it relates to my vision for public schools. Too many of our children wake up every single day and they have to guess whether or not they're gonna have real resources in their schools. We wanna take the guess, the guessing out of our public school system. This ideal of choice, uh, this ideal of privatization has been an absolute failure for the people of Chicago. And so to your question, they're tasked to carry out the vision that I have for public education in this city. And my vision for public education is this in this city, that once and for all, parent voice matters, no matter where you live. You deserve libraries, librarians, AP courses, honors courses. Just this week, uh, we invested $2.5 million um, into a, a West Side school uh, that we visited last year um, over at Collins. Um, these students asked very specifically about the renovation of their building and access to better resources. Delivering on those promises is what I was elected to do, and delivering those promises is exactly what I'm doing. Good afternoon, Mayor. Um, hey, good afternoon. Uh, Color of Change yesterday, along mm. with a number of activist organizations, yeah. three alder people sent a letter to your office urging you to tell Superintendent Snelling to fire police officers with extremist ties and form a task force looking at identifying and preventing extremist uh, affiliated people in law enforcement. Mm -hmm. How does uh, how do you respond to that letter? Yeah, look, I, so first of all, let me just acknowledge that this this week, um, uh, an, uh, an, another officer fell victim to, to suicide and our prayers and our thoughts are with the family of this fine officer, um, as well as all of our officers who are um, 
confronted daily uh, with the level of trauma that we will continue to, to provide support for, for, for those uh, women and men. Look, I've had this conversation with Superintendent Snelling about identifying individuals um, who do not live up to our values and our standards. Um, he has a very, um, I believe, um, extensive process um, that looks into the characterization of the accused or those who have demonstrated um, that they don't possess the values of, of, of our city. And we will continue to evaluate that, that, that structure as well as that criteria moving forward. Um, and I'm still very much committed to making sure that our, our force, uh, women and men, represent our values and they're ultimately there to serve and protect. Hi, Mayor. How are Hi. you today? I'm wonderful. Thank you for asking. Welcome. Um, I had a question about uh, different interest groups. So uh, Good Kids Mad City, public health workers who have spoken out about their anxiety around budget cuts. And I'm wondering uh, if you had any response to their concerns and just like what would you say to those different groups that are really looking for programming to continue on in 2025? Yeah, look, first of all, I'm very much still committed to um, expanding our behavior health care. Uh, mental health is something that is so critical to all of us as residents of this fine city. Uh, whether you're serving on the front line as a, as a, as a public employee um, or any other capacity, whether you're a, a child growing up in a, in a neighborhood will grow, where gross disinvestment um, has provocated um, trauma, quite frankly. In fact, um, I was just in, in a discussion with some of the um, advocates around how I'm not sure if people know this, but I think it's an important note to your question around why we have to continue our investment in behavioral and mental health. When the United States government, when our military um, is preparing for war, the doctors that they will send overseas, um, those doctors get trained in black neighborhoods where primarily black individuals live because the United States military recognizes that the type of trauma that these doctors are going to experience as a part of their responsibility as doctors um, um, in war, that the best training is where black people live. That is um, very telling. And so with that, you know that we've made a commitment to um, expanding behavior and mental health, which we've done that. Um, we made a commitment to hire more behavioral health care workers, which we've done that. We've moved away from the pilot program um, with this alternate response, as we say, to 911, where behavioral health care workers show up so police officers don't have to do the jobs of behavioral mental health care workers. So that commitment is very much real. This budget and the challenges that we are experiencing, all of our advocates are fully aware of how previous administrations have run the finances into the ground. Now we're at a point now where the the revenue and our expenses are not evenly matched, bare minimally. This is why the act that we did today, which will ultimately save us money in the long run, um, was so important to um, improving the structural damage, um, improving the conditions of the structural damage that has been caused. So we're going to continue to work with advocates. This is something that is important to me. You all know, finally, youth and workforce, um, behavior and mental health. Um, uh, housing and having safe communities. Those are things that are still very much top of mind and we're going to do everything in our power to preserve as well as expand um, those opportunities for our people. I'm going to invest in people. That's what my commitment has been and that's what it remains. Hey, Mayor. Hey. Uh, last week you said you supported the ordinance to lower the citywide speed limit only if it's done in an equitable way. I'm wondering if you can just expand on what you mean by equitable. Equitable? Are you talking about fines, enforcement, mm -hmm. that sort of thing? Yeah, it's a good question. I think you know the answer to that, but thank you for, for not assuming. Um, I do appreciate um, you know the frame of your question. However, um, look, there's no secret that um, when it comes to the distribution of fines and fees, as well as ticketing, there's a disparate impact on west side, south side, right? That's very obvious. I, I saw something, uh, I don't know, this is a few years ago. Many of you all know that I ride my bike. If you don't know, I do. Um, and um, that black f individuals were four times more likely to receive a ticket riding a bike in Chicago than anyone else. I didn't even know such a <laughs> disparity existed even for riding a bike in Chicago. So, you know, I do appreciate that um, the sponsor, Alder Laspada, recognizes that historically there's been damage 
um, that, look, my commitment to safe streets is real. So, um, and I will continue to support measures to create safer streets. And when we talk about equity, we have to talk about implementation and have to be very thoughtful about where these disparities have been pervasive so that we don't repeat the sins of the past. So I did ask the alder to um, slow it down. Get it? Okay, it's a tough crowd. All right, thank you, thank you. Right. Hi, Mayor, thanks hey. for taking questions. Um, uh, as you know, Pedro Martinez's contract is very specific. Um, can you tell us what the cause would be to fire him, if any? And um, going forward, would there be a nationwide search to replace him? So no, I, I won't tell you that because I don't discuss personnel issues and I think everybody knows that. This is not about a single individual. Uh, there has been no indication one way or another of how we are going to approach personnel issues for not just Chicago Public Schools, but personnel issues throughout my entire administration. Now, as far as the second part of your question about a national search, that would only be necessary if there was a vacancy. Hi, Mayor. How are Hi. you? I'm wonderful. You can't tell? Uh, OK. I, I All right, so don't answer that, because if you say you can't, then I'm going to have to go back and, I don't know, put on a different tie. But go ahead. Um, on the Civic Federation's report on a specific recommendation for your budget, uh, potentially foregoing the advance pension payment this year in light of the budget cap, I know you said everything from that report is on the table, but um, you've already committed to the advance pension payment in your budget forecast. Is that something you'd be Look, willing I to mean, backtrack I, on? I, I appreciate the question. You're very, very, very well within um, your parameter there um, to, to highlight what I've made a commitment to doing. Look. The structural damage is real. We have to repair it. Um, the stuff that was done um, under duress, uh, you know, ostensibly, um, left us in a very financial um, desperate state, quite frankly. I, I, I don't believe that at this moment we can um, move away from our effort to repair. And I've made a commitment that I will listen to everyone. Now, I don't know if they've ever suggested that before. I don't know, um, but be that as it may, I am a listener and there are people who, um, who know that and that's why they're putting forth ideas that they've never put forth before because they know I'll, I'll actually listen to them. Hi, Mayor. Hi. Um, you know, with the presidential election just a couple weeks away, you know, what, in your view, would a Trump presidency mean for Chicago? Are there specific initiatives or departments or projects that you feel would be at risk? And on, you know, the flip side, what do you feel a Harris presidency would mean for the city? Yeah, well, obviously, I'm very much committed to making history and, you know, electing uh, Vice President Kamala Harris is not just about making history, um, but that is important. You know, my daughter you know, got a chance to experience the Democratic National Convention, just the, 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 the eye um, of my daughter uh, being enamored and intrigued and motivated by someone who reflects her being as well as her values. Um, that's something that I'll never forget and I will continue to fight to make sure that little black girls, brown girls, Asian girls, white girls across America can have that type of hope and aspiration in the leader of the free world. So what comes with that is my commitment um, to behavioral mental health, as was uh, spoken to earlier by one of your colleagues. Um, Vice President Kamala Harris has made a commitment to hire 14,000, I believe, um, behavioral health care workers across um, our school districts in America. Uh, we're talking about hundreds of millions of dollars into our education system. Uh, Governor Walls is a good example of that. The amount of money that he has put forth in education in Minnesota, I believe it's upwards of $2.2 billion. What a dynamic duo. A social studies teacher, go figure, um, actually believes in investing in children, right? And so those are just some highlights. The last one that I'll say is that this Inflation Reduction Act and the billions of dollars of investments to clear the lead service lines and to create more uh, jobs in our green economy, this is revolutionary. This is once in a generation opportunity, right? And so that's why um, at the city college level, for instance, we are intentionally making sure that we are going to our Chicago public schools to get young people registered for post 
high school opportunities, right? The number one subgroup of registrants um, in, our, in our city colleges are black young men. $20 billion of new investments in the city of Chicago. Our chief operations officer is here who has led that, that, those opportunities. Um, the uh, 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 Harris Walls administration lines up with youth and workforce, behavior and mental health, education, good paying jobs for people, and transforming our economy so that it is sustained. Now, <laughs> with Donald Trump, you get the opposite of all of that. I mean, he talks about, and he's serious. I mean, we have to take him seriously, you all, to get rid of the Department of Education. He said it, if you educate children on the history of Mayor Harold Washington or the history of descendants of slaves, he is not going to send your state money. He said it, he's on record. Um, his position around the Department of Justice is absolutely horrifying. And so for the people of Chicago, as we move towards better, stronger, safer, a more inclusive economy, um, he is the antithesis to the hopes and aspirations and the dreams of our ancestors. So not only would it be problematic for the city of Chicago, he would be devastating for the globe. Good afternoon. Good Mayor. afternoon. Uh, I want to follow up on Tonya's question uh, about the commitment to young people, especially, mm. and safety. Uh, we had some people upstairs uh, from Good Kid. Uh, Good Kids, Mad City, yeah. uh, talking about the Peace Book specifically. Mm -hmm. um, it's been tried out in the city. Yep. And are you confident that you'll be able to find the money to keep that going or to expand it? Well, thank you again for that question. And thank you both for lifting up and elevating the voices of our young people in this city. That's something that's very dear and, uh, and near to my heart. Um, it's it's you know, the way Jesus the Christ said it, that if you cause a young person to stumble, you're better off tying a mallet around your neck and jumping in the lake. So just for the record, you know, you can quote me on this. Jesus Christ was the first person that said, go jump in the lake. All right, this is, I'm trying, Craig. I'm trying my best. Come up with good material here. Um, so look, I, we, we have to find it. You know, we had a pilot this year, right, uh, Tina, where we hired, I don't know how many it was, it was it 200 young people. This was an effort pushed by the, the young people at Good Kids Mad City. These are remarkable, you know, young people who want to participate in transforming our city. And so that type of participation and engagement from our young people is critical. Uh, we've also expanded our youth commission, right? 40 uh, young people who are paid um, to come up with these ideas, right? Because we see the value that they bring to government. So the short answer is yes, we, we, we have to find ways to continue to support this effort because um, it's going to take all of us you all to build safer communities like we have relied on policing so much it, it is a shame quite frankly I'll just be direct here these individuals that say they support police officers but their work doesn't back up to supporting the police officers is not just disingenuous it's hypocrisy how do you say you support law enforcement, but every single day we keep asking them to do more and more and more and more? Not under my watch. And so the Good Kids Mad City, uh, Good Kids Mad City, their efforts and the leadership of this young organization, I'm very proud of them. And we're going to do everything in our part to, to see more of that book um, um, come to fruition. Thank you for that question. Mayor, uh, thanks for taking questions. Um, the state controller is not a fan of, of the $1.5 billion refi, uh, and some other municipal finance onlookers are saying there's no guarantee uh, the savings that you're promising will be realized. Uh, is there a chance that, that those numbers are not going to be accurate once you go to market with this borrowing, with the refi? Hey, Joe. Sure. Thank you for the question. I think there's been a lot of confusion around this transaction, so happy to explain a little bit. Whenever you go to market, you don't know what the rates are going to be. If we knew what the rates were going to be, well, I wouldn't be standing here at this podium. You know, I'd be relaxing in a cabana by a beach somewhere. Um, we don't know what the market's going to be. But interest rates now are significantly lower than they were when those bonds were issued. So we know if we do a refinancing deal, we're going to save money. And we've been pretty conservative in our estimates of what we think they're going to be. Last year, we were conservative. We estimated about $70 million would come out of this transaction. Now we're estimating about $90 million will. But truly, we think it's going to be significantly more. Now, if in the next you know, month or so, interest rates spike up and we can't get those savings, we'll defer during the transaction. I mean, we're not, going, we're not selling bonds to sell bonds. Uh, we're doing this transaction solely to save money, and that is our goal. And if the savings are you know, not sufficient, um, we'll delay 
and wait for another time when rates are better. But right now, we're very comfortable in the projections that we've given um, that we will realize those savings. Uh, thank you for that question. I hope that 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 um that satisfies. Hi, Mayor. How hey, are you? I'm terrific. Thank you, Heather. Um, it's been more than six months since Dexter Reed was shot by Chicago police officers. That investigation is still ongoing. With you have confidence in that conduct of the police officer, and do you have confidence that? Hold on a second, Heather. Let's get you a better mic. Oh. I'm so used to hearing my voice and thinking your face. Yeah, we got it. <laughs> okay, we'll try that again. It's much better. Um, it's been six months since Dexter Reed was killed. That on investigation is still ongoing with the Civilian Office of Police Accountability. Do you have confidence in that process, and do you believe the city's misconduct process agency is, is working? Well, you know, first of all, let me just say that that entire um, experience um, it, it was that was really hard to watch you know that's probably one of the more tougher days that I've had as mayor um, you know without belaboring the point I'll get to the question I promise but I it's it, it's it's hard not to talk about it when the question is raised about Dexter Reed someone who was a student where I taught where just within a couple of years he could have very well been in room 211 um, in my in my class at Westinghouse and so when those support services went away you know unfortunately the um, the, the the village um, um, was not as strong as it needed to be for Dexter and so that's why these investments are important now as far as you know you know our conversations um, right now continue to give me confidence that we will um, you know, have an investigation that that honestly um, reflects, you know, what happened. Um, you know, again, because it is an ongoing litigation, I have to, you know, be thoughtful about my words today. But, you know, again, just as a father and as a public school teacher, as a resident of the city of Chicago, you don't ever want to see, one, that type of exchange, and two, you don't ever want to see, um, you know, death at the hands of, of, of a police fire. So yes, I remain confident and I think it's just slightly more expansive for me. The way the city responded and showed up, that could have tore our city apart and it didn't. Um, that's indication that, that I'm, I'm only lifting that up, Heathers, because that's some indication of why my confidence still remains. Um, where other cities and even this city was torn apart by a police-involved shooting. Um, you know, was it just this Sunday, right? It was a 10-year anniversary of the, the, the murder of Laquan McDonald. Um, so, you know, that is very triggering for the people of Chicago. So um, the confidence that I have and what I'm exuding um, is really based on how much our city has grown over these last 10 years. And yeah, again, the, the desire really is to make sure that we have systems of care around young people um, so they're not in a position or a situation um, that compromises them. And we certainly have to make sure that we don't have a scenario or a situation um, where law enforcement is, um, um, is not living up to our, our work to, to have constitutional policing. Hi, Mayor. Thank you also for taking questions today and for getting a good mic so that you could hear me. Um, if I could just, a quick yes or no question. Is your vision for CPS to have a new CEO? My vision for CPS is to make sure that every single child, particularly neighborhood schools, are fully funded and resourced. It's I, never I, been about, yes or no, I, may, I, I guess I I'm a yes or no question. Yeah, is, I, I get what you're simple? saying, but I, I wish it, I really wish it was that simple. I do, and I, I understand why you know, this is a conversation around one individual, um, but you know, look, you all, if it was just simply one individual that could change the course of history, uh, history would have been changed by now, right? And I don't mean to be luxury, I promise you I don't. And I don't discuss personnel issues, and this is not about one individual. You know, look, for two consecutive years, you all, we've had, um, you know, steady growth in our public school system. That hasn't happened in over a decade. Um, this previous board, the work that we have done to embrace evidence-based 
um, funding, um, our work to, and working with the CEO around paid time off for, for a profession that's 80% women. There's a lot of great work that has been done. Now we're transitioning into a fully elected representative school board, the first mayor, by the way, to commit to a fully elected representative school board. Um, so, you know, I know you want a yes or no or up or down on one individual, but this is about the 325,000 young people that we service every day. So I guess the, to, to my question then, how quickly would you like to see the board move, presuming they do follow through on your vision uh, to bring about change? Uh, if they take action on November 1st, their first date when they can take action, how soon would you expect that they would you know, vote in a new CEO, and do you have people in mind that you would recommend already if there is a vacancy? <laughs> Much better, Craig. That was fine job, sir. Um, I, I, you know, this, first of all, this, the, the individuals that have been nominated, these are just outstanding individuals, right? So um, I feel good about um, their ability to lead us through this moment because um, that's what the people of Chicago deserve, you all. Um, you know, in terms of the expedition of their work and their assignment, I believe they know that I am um, eagerly um, 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 pushing towards um, a school district that works for every child. And, that, and that's the most important thing. This is not about personnel. This is about moving with haste to ensure that our English language learners are fully supported, our special education um, individuals with, um, with IEPs, that they're fully supported. Um, uh, um, I believe our district is roughly 25 to 30 percent um, individuals with, with, with IEPs. Um, a good portion of them are young black boys. Um, the work that we're doing around education for black children in particular, um, we'll have, we have a, a committee that is dedicated to that work. And so there's no time to wait uh, when it comes to executing that full vision. And uh, I believe this board is up for that challenge. So not too long ago, you described your leadership style as a Shaka Khan song. You said that you do it naturally, but the people in the Deep South have a Shaka Khan song for you too, because they're not seeing the investment, that, uh, the nebulous investment that your administration keeps promising. So their Shaka Khan song is, what you gonna do for me when the chips are down? Straight question, looking for a straight answer, straight out. Okay, well, it's not every day that I get a question from Shaka Khan's perspective, but I do appreciate it. It's actually brilliant. Um, Kenwood, by the way, where my son goes. So shout out to Shaka Khan and um, her being every woman. Um, look, we just were in the 28th Ward on Friday um, with Alderman Irvin. $385 million of new investments for infrastructure, uh, for jobs, for affordable housing. Um, I, I talk a lot about the young people that we've hired. I, I, I think it's, and I'm not saying that you're doing this or you, this is your motivation, but the almost 28,000 young people that receive summer jobs, of which the top 10 neighborhoods were on the west and south sides of Chicago, that's, those are real investments for those families. I, I know what that's like. I, you know, I don't mean to sing a sad love song. Do you know who song, wrote that? Another sad love song? That's okay. It's Tony Braxton, I believe. But, you know, look, when I got my first check, when I was working a summer job, it's $300, I promise you. And the first person that meet, greeted me with that, with that $300 check was my mother, because I had to give her that full check. And look, my heart hurt, but I know that's not a story that is unique to me. Um, at the time, my family counted on me in my summer job. And we're talking about young people um, who are overwhelmingly um, disinvested in as the, uh, as the result of just not being seen. You know, we're, we've already built um, roughly 1,700 affordable homes, more that are coming on the docket. Um, you know, our work to, to make sure that we have a more equitable approach to how we hire in this city, you know, we're leading the charge in that. In fact, working with our streets and sanitation, um, this is something that our, my chief operations officer has been working with uh, uh, our, our commissioner of streets and sanitation, 70 uh, young people came through a summer program. Um, uh, I think 12 or so went on to college, another 52, 58? 52 young people, uh, our young people, um, who are uh, poised to, to, to be city employees. Um, you know, the fact that we have, um, you know, prime contractors like BOA Construction, 
that received um, the, the main contract at an airport for expansion. That's the first black company in the history of America. You know, so, I mean, I can go on and on. I mean, but I think that the point that I'm making is, is that the investments that we are making are real. And, and, and finally, um, I actually find it to be not only disingenuous, but I find it to be reprehensible to be dismissive of those investments because the people of Chicago have longed for them. And so I think it's imperative that we share what the truth is. We have spent 20 times the amount just on the west and south sides of Chicago to a crisis that nobody can manage nationally, fixed it, built a single shelter system to respond to a housing crisis. In fact, had we actually passed Bring Chicago Home, we would have the exact amount of money that we need to have a shelter system that responds to the fact that 70% of those that are unhoused are black folks. So the people who voted, or I'm sorry, the people who spent money uh, to, to compel voters to vote against that investment, that was a vote against black people. Now, I'll close with this. I just find it. One more question, though. Just, just <laughs> relax, okay? okay? You'll get yours. Don't interrupt me ever again. I find it interesting that the only other time in our city's history where an administration has been vehemently opposed the way my administration has been opposed is during, during Mayor Harold Washington's administration. Now, there are some people who oppose the work that we're doing, are the same folks who would be standing on top of desks if it were 1983. So we're gonna continue to invest in people because that's what I promised to do. Last question. Right. William J. Kelly, City News, uh, Mayor Johnson. I, as a lifelong Chicagoan, by the way, um, it breaks my heart to hear from real Chicagoans every single day how they feel unsafe in the city of Chicago, the streets. Um, every day, every weekend, double-digit shootings. Uh, we have, obviously, murders, uh, carjackings, armed robberies. Um, a young man, 18 years old, eight, uh, Josh Kendall, from your hometown, uh, Elgin, I believe, uh, was uh, shot in the head and murdered out in front of the United Center where the DNC uh, was held. You like to brag about how safe it was. Of course, millions and millions of dollars, security fences and, and uh, helicopters and everything else uh, keeping uh, DNC party guests safe. Yet the second the DNC left town, we, uh, the uh, shooting. Hey, the William, murders. you got to ask your question. I'm trying to be patient. Yeah, absolutely. Nobody else in here has taken this long right. to monologue. So well, respect your colleagues. Well, in the, out of Get respect, to the question. Out of respect for Josh, uh, jo, uh, okay, Jess, ask the uh, question, Jesse Kendall and, and his family who are grieving today um, from Chicago as a result of Chicago violence. You know, we see, obviously, your administration. William? I'm gonna give you one more opportunity to ask a question. I'm gonna move on. Okay. Ask your would you, question. Would you, would you be willing to uh, reduce the 200 plus uh, CPD security detail that you and your wife, Stacy, by the way. Um, so your uh, question is, is, is if you, you want me to reduce to my detail. Got your question. Yes. Can somebody grab his mic? I got your question. I'm gonna answer it. Yeah. Your question yeah. is, I got it. Your question is, should I reduce my detail? So let me just first of all acknowledge the pain and the suffering that victims of gun violence have experienced in this city and around America. It is gut-wrenching, absolutely. And my deep condolences, not to just this family, but all families that have experienced violence at the hands of gun violence. It's a real problem in America. Now, with all of the reductions that we are experiencing in Chicago right now, Reduction in homicides, reduction in shootings, reduction in, in vehicular, vehicular carjackings. All of the, the violent crimes are turning in the right direction. In fact, we were just in the 11th district on the west side of Chicago where we have cut the homicides in half in that district. Now, do we have more work to do? Absolutely. That's why I made a commitment to hiring 200 more detectives by the end of my first term, which I would do that by the end of this year. We made a commitment for, 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 for technology that is useful and effective. We will have three brand new helicopters by the end of this year. It's why we've also 
have alleviated the pressure off of police force by taking our pilot program of the alternate response to 911 and we've made it a real program so that police, police officers would not have to respond to the 40% of the calls that are mental health crises that frees them up to respond in, in, to the more violent uh, nature uh, crimes, right? And so there's been clear investment um, into our community safety that is the reflection of the full force of government. Now, as far as my own personal detail, um, that is a, a dynamic that we have a lieutenant um, based upon is previous administrations. Detail, or is that part of your detail? It's all the part of the same, so thank you. Last question. Uh, good afternoon. Good uh, afternoon. Mr. Mayor. Uh, oh, okay. Oh, sorry. I appreciate you standing up in my honor, but you don't yes, have to do that. I have thank to. You, you, are, thank I'm you. African, you know. Uh, I understand no, the culture. You trust me. Mayor, you stand up, but Respectfully. This, this is I've, different. That's why I just wanted to make sure I clarify that. You meant <laughs> no you. disrespect. That's a cultural dynamic that I recognize, brother. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Um, my name is Dr. Wale Idris. I'm the uh, publisher of Africa USA Today magazine online. You can Google it anywhere. Many Africans in the diaspora uh, they're making a complaint to me that I should address it to you, Mr. Mayor, that during the election, you always frequent in African community, but now they don't see you frequently anymore. Uh, what should I tell them when I go back to the community? That's number one. Number two, I was so depressed this morning when I saw many people lodging all kind of campaign, uh, negative issue to you in the chamber, but that is not new. I've been covering this city, this beautiful city politics since uh, out of Washington, Rome Emanuel, Roy Lightfoot. So it's nothing new. But how do we solve this grievance? I mean, what do I say to people that calm down? I mean, it's only a man, it's only one man. I'll be your advocate or if you want me to. <laughs> free. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. I think the OIG would appreciate that, um, that, uh, that asterisk there. Um, you know, look, the African diaspora is, is um, a rich part of the soul of Chicago. Um, over the last 17 months, I've worked to visit um, neighborhoods all over the, the, the city. In fact, um, I believe within the first year, we visited every single neighborhood. And so it was important that we, 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 we do that. Um, to, to, to the many festivals that I enjoyed prior to becoming mayor um, that are still important to us. In fact, my wife and children were able to attend when I was not able to for this last um, around us, some of those festivals. But, you know, I can assure you um, now that we've made a lap around the city, um, we will continue to engage um, with communities all over uh, the city of Chicago, but more specifically the African diaspora. You know, as far as the energy that's in the room, let me just say this, you all. Um, to the extent in which there has been, you know, public debate and some tension within our government, um, that's what sharpens us as a city. So in that regard, it's, it's, there's, there's not a new dynamic in terms of competing ideas. What is unique about this particular moment is that every single promise that I've made, I've worked hard to keep. I have. You know, you know I, I know someone you know, earlier you know, characterized me as a steamroller. Which, by the way, if that is the case, do you know how slow steamrollers move? I'm just saying for the record, if you were to characterize my administration as a steamroller, I would consider that quite patient. Because we have been patient. But the people of Chicago have had to wait for decades as it relates to these critical investments. And some of the um, perial behavior, the, the petulance that exists, look, I get it, That's, that puts on a show for you all, quite frankly. The vast majority of people that I run into all over the city, do you know what never comes up? Man, Mayor Johnson, how about that last city council meeting? No one ever brings it up. They don't. They don't talk and say, wow, Mayor Johnson, did you read that last tweet? You know what they ask? Hey, Mayor Johnson, do we have an opportunity to do more of what we're doing? How do we respond and show for the people of Chicago? That's what I'm doing. That's what I was elected to do. And I'm enjoying my time serving as mayor of the city of Chicago, as you all know, the greatest freaking city in the world. Here, here. Thank you all.